and I grew up on a farm outside of Dana. Um, I went to Monuk Dana Rutland High School, and as far as the district goes, Monuk is the death center physically of the district, and I live between Monuk and Benson now. So I went to school at Monuk Dana Rutland High School, graduated from there, and went on IBCC, which is in the northern part of the district up in Oglesby. And from there, I went to work at the Department of Corrections as a state law enforcement. I was the president of correctional officer for six years. Most of that time spent in Pontiac, which is in the district as well. And Pontiac, of course, you've heard, he has all his troubles going on right now with the state doing the sneaky things, getting their fingers in there. You know, they close down the, the medium farm. And so what are they what are they do, going to do? Are they going to slowly close that facility down? You know, you know, or make it small enough so it isn't worthwhile fighting for it? So we don't know. The state's been, the state didn't show up to the town hall that Tom Bennett had up, up there. And uh, I can tell you about waste while, you know, as I go through my list. I'll tell you about waste. When I was working the, the prison system, they built, in the middle of the prison, they built a water, a multi-tiered water fountain, like one you see in Italy, one of those multi-tiered water fountains. Well, it was 60, over $60,000 for that water fountain. When they turned the water on, it only went up about an inch. Okay? And so, what happened? Did they bring the, the contractors back in to fix it? You know, was there a guarantee? Was, what happened? They didn't fix it. They didn't come back in to fix it. Was it somebody's brother? You know, that fit, that they had the contract and they just left and said, see ya? So what they ended up doing is put dirt in there and, and plant flowers. You had a sixty thousand dollar multi-tiered flower plot in the middle of the prison. If I'm if I'm in Springfield and I see something like that, and a department of corrections or whatever department comes and says, "Here's a budget for next year," and you spend sixty thousand dollars on a waste thing that shouldn't even been a water fountain there, you need sixty thousand dollars less next year. So that's how you get a lot of the a lot of the the spending down. We don't have a budget. We don't have a income problem. We have a spending problem in the state. You, you got to find out where the corruption is. You have to find out where, you, where you're spending. You know, um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of issues with that. I, you know, that bothered the heck out of me back then. So while I was, at, while I was working in the prison, I went on and got a, another degree, this one in electronics, and started working at Mass Technology Services for, for uh, Caterpillar. And then I worked Caterpillar for there. I worked there for a couple years until I got on State Farm. I've been at State Farm for over 30 years. And that showed, you know, I've been. It's a house infrastructure analyst, and you have to figure out the entire system. And State Farm's a huge system across the country. Had 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 the largest public network in the world. So, and, and I'm in the systems department. So, and you you got to learn how to navigate. And they have lots of rules, lots of regulations. You got a bank, so you got a lot of rules and stuff there as well. So, I'm also president of the Benson Fire Department uh, Protection District, and. I've been that for six years, and we get along well, and we're in the black, and we stay in the black, and we're saving money. I'm trying to build, you know, at some point we're going to build a new, a new facility, because the one we got the floor is cracking, and it's an old facility downtown, down an old building downtown Benson. But um, when a prisoner's mandate's been through for the mask, he had 30 days, he had 30 days to go, you know, to send his emergency, his emergency orders went through. After 30 days, he had to go to legislature. legislation. He did not do it. And, and also his mandate was null and void after 30 days. We never mandated in our fire, in our uh, our meetings, to wear masks. And then when they came out and said, well, you got to have your 30, your 30 guys got to have a shot. You know, you got to have a shot for COVID. We never mandated the shot. So, um, I'm also a Gideon, Livingston County Gideon. I've been Livingston County Gideon for a couple of decades, and three decades. And I, uh, you know, we pass out Bibles over at, over at February Fair, Freshman's Reunion at Pontiac, and we and Dwight Harbor Days. And we go to different different schools and hand out Bibles on the sidewalk because you can't get into schools no more. No more. So we hand hand them out on the sidewalk. Um, I believe in the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is there to protect you against the abuse of government. That's what it's there for. You know, to go hunting's fine, to go sh target shooting's fine, but it's there if the government misbehaves to a point where you, you need to do something. So that's what the Second Amendment is there for. Um, I'm right to life. 
got the highest right, highest setting rating for the, uh, the Illinois Right to Life Association, and uh, that I believe life starts at conception. So um, that's my beginning statement. And think, oh, I'll bring one other thing in. My wife's here tonight, and I've been married to her for. She, she shoots me every time I don't say it. See, we've been married for 33 <laughs> years, and we have six. We have six children. So and so yeah. Yeah, you also have pamphlets on the tables that tell about me. And uh, if you want to learn more about me, like I said before, go ask her. She'll tell you the truth. <laughs> so, so, well, thank you.